Welcome everyone, we are live. Um, good evening, my name is Nikki Lopez of Nikki Lopez Creative and you're watching The Circle where every Tuesday, 8.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm talking to artists, I'm talking to activists, social entrepreneurs, people doing good things in the world today. And today I have a very special guest, Rachel Sh Shapiro. Thank you for being here. Hey Nikki, thanks so much for having me, I'm honored. Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, we are going live now. We're live in a couple of places. So we're live on Facebook under Nikki Lopez Creative as well as Outclick Magazine. We're also live on YouTube and Periscope. And by next week, this will be on all of your favorite podcast stations on Under the Circle. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So welcome, welcome. And so um so Rachel is the principal paradigm shifter at Integris Health Solution, uh vice chair of the Florida F Food Policy Council and founder of the hub. You've got lots going on. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, it's an exciting time to be alive. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, we got a lot to hopefully cover in this little show here. So can we just jump into, because I know you're um, coming from the culinary arts, culinary side. What what, what was your start to that journey? Huh. My start to the my culinary journey was actually on private yachts. Hmm. I had started working as just a deckhand, a stewardess, cleaning, scrubbing, serving um, when I was about 20. I dropped out of, high, out of high school and I got into the service industry and that uh, I ended up on yachts. And then I started noticing that the, I could probably cook food that was as good as or better than the food coming out of the galley, out of the kitchen. So I started cooking. Wow, wow, that's awesome. And so um, what inspires you to do that type of, like there's so many things that you could get into. What, Why food? Well, everybody eats multiple times a day. So it's a necessity, mm -hmm. uh, but it's also filled with so much pleasure. It, you know, we can, we can enjoy what we're eating. We can not enjoy what we're eating. What we're eating can nourish us or it can detract from us. Mm. It can be a healer. It can be medicine. So it's like multifunctional. I'm a big fan of efficiency. And when looking at the food system, so I became a food system advocate. I, uh, I, started, I started cooking on yachts and we would go to these different locations and part of my job was to go to the local market and buy food and and prepare for the guests and so I would always do my best to buy what was different about from that location I always wanted to try the local food and I started to develop this concept this idea that uh, if I buy food that's grown where I am at that time of year it's probably going to be better for me mm. if I'm in that place. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I was developing this concept for a few years, and then I ended up getting off of yachts, and I realized a lot of people had already thought thought that way. <laughs> they were called locavores, and they had this name and this whole international movement. Um, and that's what really... Um, grabs my passion about food is what it can do environmentally, socially, and economically. Wow. Okay. That's a lot. Um, so you started, the, um, you're a part of the, am I saying right? Integris Health Solutions? Integris. Integris Health Solutions. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, when I decided to leave the yachting industry because it no longer aligned with, aligned with my personal values, I um, I was taking a certification in health coaching, a holistic health, a nutrition and health coaching. And at that point, I also was developing an idea for, to for my own uh, line of cleaning products. Mm. Holistic cleaning products because while I worked on yachts, we had, I did a lot of cleaning. <laughs> and so many of the cleaning products out there were very uh, toxic. 
and they didn't feel good for me. And so I started to make my own using vinegar and baking soda and essential oils. And I, so I started to develop this idea. And at that point, that's when I came up with Integris because to me, integrity, mm -hmm. and not as like a judgment, but more as like an integrity with things working thing. You know, it only works if we show up when we say we're going to show up when we do what we say we're going to do. And that's integrity. Mm -hmm. and that's important to me. Uh, so I named my company Integris Health. Also, another very important concept to me and solutions also extremely important to me. I don't want to complain. I want to come up with solutions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so for those who are watching, we actually have the Instagram for Integris Health Solution. So um, you could go, uh, you know, follow uh, Rachel, see what she's up to, connect with her. So I'll put the actual link into uh, the text box. But if you go to Instagram and go to Integris Health Solutions, you could uh, find Rachel there. So and what type of services does um, do you provide? With Integris? I provide personal and corporate wellness services. Mm -hmm. And I am a certified massage therapist, a wellness coach, and a teacher. I love teaching. I run an urban farm, so I, I can teach people how to grow their own food. And then, of course, teaching people how to use that food is both health and um, wellness preventative medicine, but also as nourishment, as delicious, enjoyable food to share with their friends and family. Mm -hmm. And what exactly is urban farm and how does that differ from a regular farm? Well, an urban farm is exactly what it sounds like when we break it down to urban being like a more city-like setting. When we think of farms normally, we think of the countryside, we think of lots of space, we think of row crops and, you know, maybe monoculture, one type of thing for miles and miles. Mm -hmm. Well, when we live in a city, uh, we don't have that luxury. We have limited space. We might have a small front yard or we might have a balcony or we might have a rooftop. And so urban agriculture really speaks to being able to grow food in urban um, settings. Awesome. And I know you're also a part of the um, Florida Food Policy Council. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, that really grew out of my, my learning about the food system, my being dissatisfied with the food system, my realizing that I didn't want to just complain, that I did want to be part of solutions. And pretty much everything was decided by policy. Our mm. food system, our lifestyle, how we live together, it's all decided by policy. And so I realized about five years ago that I needed to get involved in policy making. And I went to a, a local food summit up in Gainesville and I attended a policy workshop. And it was so ironic because a couple of the folks in the workshop said, hey, at the end, you know, is anybody interested in joining or starting a statewide food policy council? Mm. So I was young and enthusiastic. I said, sure, I'd be interested. And I stepped forward with about a dozen people. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to learn now. This is my chance to learn about food policy because I had no idea. And, you know, fast forward six months and I'm the uh, um, acting chair of the steering committee. <laughs> and we're getting the statewide food policy council off the ground. And it's hilarious. Uh, five years later, I actually... It's been a big achievement. I just handed the chair position off to a woman um, and I stepped into the vice chair role just to help guide and, and support and keep that organizational knowledge. I, I, I'm chuckling because a lot of times when we get, you know, like we, we explore these groups and we're like, oh yeah, we're into it. And somehow I'm like, wait a minute, I'm on a board. <laughs> I'm a chair. <laughs> so funny. Mm -hmm. And how do people find out about that or like if they want to get involved, where would they go? So the Florida Food Policy Council, our website is FLFPC, F for Florida, L for um, Lincoln, Florida, FLF, P, P for Peter, C for Charlie, dot org, O-R-G. That's our website. We have an active Facebook presence and... Um, we have a very wonderful YouTube channel. 
Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I know that you are into um, food justice or, you know, that it comes up a lot within the type of work that you do and the people that you work with. Um, for those who may not be, ex um, you know, who, who may not be familiar with that term, how do you explain that term? I'm going to share a couple of statistics with you. Okay. The hub, which is my latest project, is located in zip code 33311. Your life expectancy is 10 years shorter. 10 years. If you live in 33311, then if you live in the neighboring, directly adjacent neighboring zip code. Mm. Wow. If you live in zip code 33311, you are 300% more likely to get diabetes. Wow. You're also 300% less likely to find a healthy food item on the shelf. Hmm. This is what we're talking about when we're talking about food justice. If you walk a mile down the road, this all changes. Mm -hmm. That's not acceptable. That's not okay. Mm -hmm. 2020. Food's not a privilege. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not a luxury. <laughs> And it's interesting that you hear say about the diabetes, because I know some people, you know, it's, it's kind of like this common knowledge that people feel like, you know, uh, a lot of people like black people um, uh, are more prone to diabetes because of genetics. But, you know, there's like statistics that backs that there's other factors. Yeah, the study of epige epigenetics teaches us that, sure, you might have a genetic tendency, but it's actually lifestyle that turns those tendencies on. Mm. So it doesn't, not so much that it doesn't matter, but it, it really doesn't matter <laughs> what your genes say. It's really about how you live, how you, what you eat, where, how, how active are you, what type of thoughts do you hold, what type of air are you breathing, what type of, how much stress do you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. All of those factors have a greater impact on the social determinants of health. They have a greater impact on our health outcomes than our genetics ever do. It's like 25% to 75%. Or I'm making that up, but it's something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. I saw you grabbing a green drink. So ah. <laughs> I want to make sure you get that sip in. <laughs> and you can share with us a little bit about what's that green drink. <laughs> The green drink is what I affectionately call my electron potential. Yeah. Um, so one of the things that I've learned on my health journey is that we are energetic beings and we run less on food and more on electron potential. When we keep our electron or our ability to move energy through our bodies, when we keep that ability high, we operate at a higher uh, degree of efficiency. Mm. And so I've learned when I drink this green stuff, which is just dried powder, it's like 47 different green vegetables and grasses. Um, and I mix it with alkaline water. If I drink this, I feel great. If I don't, then I, um, I don't. Mm -hmm. and just, I'll let you drink that. <laughs> Thank you to your health. <laughs> yes. And we have a couple of comments. So we have Scott Strawbridge. Thank you for joining us. Uh, he said, according to Harvard School of Public Health, your zip code is more of an accurate predictor of your future health than your DNA. Yeah. And, and we kind of I, we pointed to it. Thank you, Scott, by the way, for that. Scott is one of our advisors on our project. And he has been it's funny when I met Scott a few years ago, I had been running a nonprofit in Fort Lauderdale be called heal the planet mm. and um i'd been hearing about some of the activities going on in northwest gardens which was the housing development built by the housing authority fort lauderdale which is the organization that scott was working with at the time mm -hmm. um they so it's the first lead certified neighborhood in the state of florida and they included a network of urban farms within the master plan of the development. So we're talking about 
um, affordable housing, which is so gorgeous. The, the, their, their guiding principle when building this building, these buildings or this development was had to be nice enough for their mothers to live there. Mm -hmm. And the development it has urban farms included in the master plan. So those things are staying there. They're not going anywhere. And uh, so we have this, this network of, of urban farms that are already ready to be activated mm -hmm. within walking distance of the hub, which we mm -hmm. haven't even talked about yet, but I'm getting so excited. Yes, yes. And oh, we have Tara, um, uh, president of uh, Chef Culture, saying, wonder who brought the drink too. Yeah, uh. <laughs> the green drink. <laughs> So yeah, let's let's dive into the hub. You know, what is the hub? How does it start? How, you know, let's get into it. <laughs> well, it's, you know, you are. Uh, Scott warned me that you're a masterful interviewer, and you're, and you're right. <laughs> oh man, thank you. <laughs> because you've led me down the journey of how the hub came into being, pretty much just through this conversation. Oh, nice. Yeah. So the hub is my answer to these social determinants of health and these inequities that are built into our, our physical zip codes. I don't think that that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, and it's actually unnecessary more. So it's unnecessary and it's an inefficient use of resources. Mm. It just doesn't make sense on any, at any level for these situations to be sitting for us to have food deserts where folks are actually dying because they don't have access to food that's nutrient dense that will feed their brains. Humanity, America is missing out on possibly the next Nobel Science Prize winner because that child doesn't get enough food to eat to allow their brain to function at optimal levels. That's mm -hmm. like, that's ludicrous when America throws away 40% of their food, 40%, which is the number three contributor, contributing cause to climate change. Do we see how we're in this loop that's unnecessary? And that's where the hub is steps in and we say, okay, well, let's just stop all that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. So stop, stop. Yeah. <laughs> um, in this, you know, we saw recently during this global pandemic, our food supply chains just break down. Mm -hmm. We didn't have food in the supermarket. Some people didn't even know that food came from somewhere else before the supermarket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what we saw happening when these big international supply chains broke down was we saw even industrial agriculture relying on the direct-to-consumer local food system to get the food from the farmers who were throwing it away because it was rotting in the fields mm -hmm. to the people who were getting who were starving because they couldn't get access to this food. Wow. And they were relying on the local supply chains that we had built meticulously over the last 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what the hub does is the hub activates all of this. It provides literally a central hub for this food system network. It's mm -hmm. a shared use kitchen with up to eight, uh, sorry, nine cooking stations all available simultaneously. That's four cold prep stations and four hot cooking stations. And we'll have, each station has a six burner range. Some have steamers or fryers or double, double stack convection ovens or stock pot burners. Um, and then we also have a purpose-built photo and video ready demonstration kitchen. So you can do, shoot your cooking show or we're in this wonderful building. It's a four story brand new YMCA building. And we're, we know that we'll have programming for the local elders. And keeping um, social distancing in mind, we'll, we'll be able to have the elders sitting upstairs in the third story black box theater. And they'll be able to watch the cooking demonstration of somebody literally downstairs. And they'll be able to taste the food that, was, that they watched being prepared. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. And then that kitchen is adjacent to a 2,400 square foot food hall with 10 different booths that will be showcasing chefs like Tara Gardner from Chef Culture and some of our local hot, hot shot chefs. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, um, let me take a breath, a deep breath. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We're not, if it goes over, we're fine. So yes. <laughs> Yeah, 
Uh, one of our strengths, why this project is so amazing, is because of folks like Tara Gardner and Chef Culture and yourself. You know, we met Tara through you, and mm -hmm. Tara is the president of Chef Culture, which is the leading uh, professional chefs organization in Broward County. And we are already in conversation with both the organization and individual members from the organization to take booths in our food hall. And the whole point of this food hall, uh, so something that I really think is important uh, is that this is a for-profit company. Mm -hmm. We're registered as a Florida benefit corporation. Our goal in a year's time, when, or once we have a year of operating um, financials, is to apply for certification as a benefit corporation, a B Corp. And that's a um, up-and-coming professional certification, business certification, that safeguards the commitment to triple bottom line. And that triple bottom line includes people, planet, and profit. Mm. I've run nonprofits for years. I don't think that's the model that's going to shift our culture to something that's sustainable and holistic and that everybody wins. Mm -hmm. What I believe is that we need to practice conscious capitalism. We need to not separate doing well and doing good. We need to say, yeah, sure, we can all do good. I'm going to do very well with this company. And I'm bringing down the barriers to entry for about 25, 30 other business owners. And I'm, I'm leveraging resources so that we all do good. Sure, could I do better if with a different business model? I could. I could get away with doubling my prices. Mm -hmm. But that's not the point. <laughs> and the point isn't to be a nonprofit and to have to apply for grants every year and never, you know, never be able to stand on our own two feet because that's not sustainable. The idea is, is that once we get off the ground, once we get that investment capital and get off the ground, we are profitable from the minute we open our doors. Mm. And we, uh, we leverage our resources to make that profit available to, like I said, a number of others. Mm -hmm. And what you said, I, th I think it was conscious capitalism, which I, I love how it sounds. Can you um, elaborate a little bit more about that term? So it's actually a movement. It's an international movement. I first heard about it at a... At a um, a lead with love workshop a few years ago and the gentleman Raj Sisnoda mm -hmm. was the founder of this movement. And it basically says, let's bring the idea that capitalism doesn't have to take advantage or rape and pillage anybody in order to function and be an effective financial model. Mm -hmm. We can actually be conscious about our choices. I can choose to keep my prices lower than I have to simply because I'm going to make enough. And I want to make that opportunity available to more people, not less. Mm -hmm. And that is my conscious choice to do that. So that's just like a microcosm of type of conscious capitalism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, and speaking of the hub, who are some of the partners? I know you mentioned a couple of people, but who are some of the people behind the hub? So the hub actually came out of the, um, the YMCA's desire to bring this resource to the neighborhood. The people wanted somewhere they could gather. They wanted an educational center. They wanted access to healthy food. They wanted access to education about how to grow and um, su supply this food for themselves. And so the YMCA themselves are our are, are main partner. And then... It's just, it's such a beautiful thing because mm -hmm. the food system uh, in Broward County itself and Cistrunk in particular has been, had gotten a lot of focus in the last 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. We have partners from every aspect and every uh, part of this, of the food system. And we, one of the first things we did, I was actually hired by Scott Strawbridge as a consultant. Um, and one of the first things, our first conversations was, Scott, we need an advisory board and said, Scott, I know. He said, I know. I've already got started putting one. And actually, Nikki, I think you had helped with the very first yeah. brainstorming session. Yeah. <laughs> so the first step was to say, all right, who in the community has been doing this work? Who is well, you know, who has a voice that we want to hear? And let's get all these folks together. So there's yourself. We have um, Tara Chadwick, who's the president of the Homes Beautiful uh, Local Neighborhood Association. We've got Tara Gardner, president of the Chefs um, Association. We've got 
Um, Aureli Lozano, she works with Urban mm -hmm. uh, Food for All and Urban Health Partnership, Broward Food for All. Uh, and they they specialize in policy. Sandra Marie Pierce works for the city of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, we've got Lorraine Mizell, who's a local business owner in who, a longtime business owner in um, Cistrunk neighborhood. And we've got Mildred Lowe, who's an up and coming burgeoning business owner in the Cistrunk neighborhood. And Felix Colazzo, who's the executive director of AMI Kids which is one of the nonprofits that's going to partner with us to offer these amazing uh, programs. And this is where the hub really gets juicy. So the building's cool. <laughs> the, the facility itself is awesome. Let me tell you, we've spent months designing this kitchen and this, this food hub. It's cool. More cool is the the partnerships that are, that are generating that we're going to be able and what we're going to be able to offer to everybody in this neighborhood and everybody who walks into this food hub. So AMI Kids already has a culinary apprenticeship program for, for young people. Mm -hmm. and, um, so they're going to be able to expand that program in what they offer, but also in who they offer it to by working with the hub. Mm. Um, uh, we're also looking at uh, entrepreneurship training and capacity building. The Mosaic Group, and uh, shameless plug, Amory Sorrell, she's uh, campaigning today for Soil and Water Conservation Board in Palm Beach yes. County. She was on the circle last week. Yes. <laughs> she's going to be one of our neighbors at the, at the YMCA building, and they have a co-working space. And not only do they have a co-working space, but Anne Marie is a, you know, she has a business incubator and entrepreneurship capacity building services. So we're partnering with her to offer these services to the folks who are coming in. And we're going to be able to meet people wherever they're at. Mm. They just want to get job skills training so they can go get a job in someone else's kitchen and learn. They can do that. Mm. Do they have a recipe and an idea and they need to figure out how they can at least start to make it part time on the weekends and maybe sell at some farmers markets? We can do that, too. Mm. They're ready to go and they've been testing this out and they're like, I got this is good food. We're going to start doing this seven days a week. I'm, I can't afford my own restaurant, but I can afford 100 square feet. We can do that, too. Mm. I, I love that it's giving um, access, like low entry to, you know, um, because, you know, sometimes those are some of the complaints of the neighborhood when you have this historic neighborhood and there's um, talks of uh, gentrification or all these, you know, businesses and hipster spots moving into the neighborhood, but not really giving a resource. You're, they're pulling from the resources of the neighborhood and they're having the people in the neighborhood work there, but they can't afford to go there. So I love the intentions behind the why to really have a low access entry point that you know not only serves people who have the money and capacity to do business, but also for those in the community who may have limited access to funding um, or have limited access for whatever reason to education and resources and um, these different programs that they're still saying, hey, we could bring you in. We could, you could use the co-working space. We have all these uh, uh, mentorships and people that's just ready to receive you and where you're at, help you get to the next level. So I think that's a beautiful thing. That's equity, right? Yeah. It's not, you know, we all start from the same spot. It's we all get met where we are. Mm -hmm. and we all get the help we need so that we can all reach the same outcome. And like I said, I, you know, I, I use the word efficiency a lot. It doesn't make sense to me if we um, keep 40% of our population from achieving success that we make available to the other 60%. Mm. We're all losing then. It just, it's like, come, that just, so if I have access to resources that I can leverage all of our betterment mm -hmm. that makes sense to me mm -hmm. and so that's what i choose to do with my time mm -hmm. and um food is something i believe food is the great connector when we break bread with someone mm -hmm. now we're in a whole nother paradigm of relationship 
Mm -hmm. because now the neighbor who was like, you know, a jerk yesterday because he left his trash can in the middle of the road, you had to get out and move it before you could get to work. You shared dinner with him and his wife the next night. (laughs) And now that's John. (laughs) Yeah. And you know that John's a really good guy, but every week he forgets his garbage can, but he makes a mean cocktail. So like, it's okay. Yeah. The salad was awesome, so it's fine. You're going to move John's, you know, so when we break bread together, it just changes the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And um, I think we're ready in, in America and, and in South Florida and in my life, I think we're ready to change the paradigm mm-hmm. and bring in a little more love and a little more community and a little more sharing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let me see. Oh, I think that was from an earlier comment. Uh, Scott said that's why it's called, she calls it. <laughs> a circle. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Connecting, building bridges, you know? Um, yeah, absolutely. So, um, what are some of the things that the hub needs or what are some of the ways that people can support the hub? Well, right now it's critical. Um, this whole idea came out of the the YMCA's desire to bring this resource to the neighborhood. They found me and I happen to have been working on a similar project for like the past five years I've been developing this idea. So I've had the business plans and the ideas already germinating. What I haven't had is the capital to build out a $500,000 space. So right now we've got about a third of that money raised uh, from the, from uh, the CR, pardon me, the CRA. And um, we're looking to raise about another four hundred thousand dollars in capital. A hundred thousand of that really soon, like in the next two weeks. <laughs> and we're going to be launching a crowdsourcing investment campaign. So again, I mentioned that this is a for-profit company. One of my real strong uh, drums that I like to beat is that it's okay to do well and do good. So we're not asking for donations. What we're asking is that you bet on us that you invest in us so that as we thrive, you thrive. Mm. And so I'll be sharing those uh, details with you as that campaign goes live, but it's an opportunity for you literally for as little as a hundred dollars for community members to invest in this concept. So we need to get this money so that we can actually build this thing. Once we build this thing, it's self-sufficient. It doesn't need any more input, but we do need to raise this investment capital. And then once we raise the investment capital, we're looking, we've got a couple more vendor booths available and we're going to have the shared use kitchen. So memberships are available in that. If you're a food, food truck operator, a caterer, a baker, a, a private chef, if you just, you have this recipe idea you want to try out, or you've got this YouTube channel where you do your show and you're ready to go a little bit more big time. Um, we want to hear from you. That's awesome. And so, yeah, whenever you get the, uh, I know tonight, you know, the the comment section is a little quiet and that's okay. We're here to do our thing. (laughs) So, and I know tonight is a very special night because people are out, you know, voting, tallying the vote, you know, volunteering. And so, you know, just taking a real uh, a moment to say for all of those foot soldiers out there, mm-hmm. giving people rides, making sure that they're not people are not being intimidated at the polls, making sure that people who um, are able to legally vote get their voices heard. Um, thank you so much for the work that you do and for being out there. Not everyone could be out there. You know, some of us still have stuff going on here, um, and we all have our lanes to do so. Um, I definitely want to send a shout out and some good energy out there um, that we uh, come out better than we are right now. So, and I'll just leave that at that. But as soon as you get that link, definitely share it. I'm going to put it in the comment section. And I know there's going to be a lot of people watching this on the replay. So it's either going to be in the comment section and I'll also try to put it into edit and put it into the description. Thank you. So, um, and I, I see Grecia of Femin Africa. She says, thank you both, Rachel and Nikki, for all you do in the community. You're so awesome. Oh, thank you. You're awesome, too. Can I share a quick story with you sure. about why I do this work? Absolutely. So I mentioned Mildred Lowe, the sweet ice lady. And she is a, a woman who, she's a, a small business owner in Sistrunk. And she's uh, part of our advisory group. And... 
she's been applying for her certifications and working with the county and getting all the inspections done. And I get these update emails from Mildred and it's um, mind blowing to me to see when, when just being part of this, this advisory group, literally giving of her time, she, she checks in with me every few weeks and send me, sends me an email, even though she's running a small business, she's got a full-time job, mm. she's got a family. She's like, Hey, Rachel, what can I do for you? Mm. How can I help you? And so by being, being part of this advisory group, giving of herself and her time, she got connected with AMI Kids, which is the nonprofit I mentioned. Mm -hmm. They have a program with Workforce One where they can subsidize up to 50% of the salary for one of their kids for 12 weeks. So now because she's giving of herself, Mildred now gets access to this resource of mm. this young person who she's now able to employ. So they're getting real real life work experience. She's getting an employee getting an employee at fifty percent. AMI is leveraging workforce one. She's giving of herself to us. Wow. We're bring, I mean, it's just this is like the beautifulness that mm -hmm. is this work. And that's why I show up is so that I can meet Mildred's mm -hmm. and I can hear stories like that and be part mm -hmm. of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's amazing. That's yeah. I have, you're telling me and I'm like, Oh, I gotta get goosebumps. That's, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And I, I think, I mean, there's so many, I, I, I so really, there's so many business models, but I'm like, I want to have, I relate more to those business models that's doing an extra little step to, take care of another person and to consider another person or that's creating impact and, you know, and you can still do good with those things as well. So, you know, learning what that is. And, um, but, um, you know, I think that's what um, this pandemic, he, I have my cat in the background. She's, she's like, every time I'm like, I think 80% of my lives, there's some parts of like, do you have a cat? <laughs> so she's like a part, like the second uh, host of the show, I guess. Mm. But um, you know, and now I lost my train of thought. The pandemic. Oh yeah, the pandemic. So like this pandemic, um, not only is it forcing people to slow down in some ways, um, but it's also exposing all of a lot of issues that many people were not privy to that we have. You know, like, um, you know, of course, we, you know, there's some people feel the system is broken. There's some of us who feel no, it was built out and working exactly how it was intended to work. If that's why it has to be destroyed and then recreated uh, with equity and all those, you know, good things in mind. And um, so, but, you know, a lot about this is just like, okay, it's not even just about, oh, am I getting sick? And how am I impacted? Is how can I impact somebody else? And, you know, that whole business model where you get to care for the next person or help somebody out or someone who's a little bit more well off could say, well, you know, I could help you. I could give you resources. I don't have to put my hand back in and, and give it to you, but I want to because I want to see you succeed. And I know it doesn't take away from my success. And then I also feel good about it. So, and I think it sets um, a great example for, you know, youth coming up and, um, you know, so I just think it's, a, it's, it's wonderful work. So, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, um, for me, so I, I, I called myself a paradigm shifter. And this is one of the paradigms that we are in the process as a human race of shifting right now is that mm -hmm. if I win, you lose. Mm-hmm that there isn't enough for you and me. That's bull honky. That's just not true. It's literally not true. There's enough food on the planet for everybody. There's mm -hmm. enough space to grow more food for more people on the planet. We don't have to worry about that. We have the medicines, you know, we have all we need to be healthy, happy, vibrant, and alive. Mm. And so I'm out to bust that up. I'm out to say, you know what? That's not true. I'm calling the lie. Mm -hmm. And I'm calling the lie that we have to fight against what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. We don't have to fight against what doesn't work. You know what we do? We take all that life energy. Rather than pushing against that wall, we take all of that and we go build something. Mm -hmm. Go build a farm. I used to march in the street against major corporations. I started my life as an activist. 
Mm-hmm. And then I, I realized after a while that I'm yelling and I'm fighting and, and you know what, no one's really like, no one's listening that much. And actually I could, I could use that energy. I was tired and I could actually invest that energy into something that was life giving. Mm-hmm. And so then I became an advocate and I started talking about what I was for and building something. And that's why this hub is the opportunity. You know, I love it because it's not about Rachel. Rachel is the star of the show. Rachel, all she does, she gets to build something where all these other people get to live out who they really are. Mm. Tara Gardner, who's a baker, she's not a chef, she's not a cook, she's not, she's a baker. <laughs> so when we put in these ovens and we put in this workspace with the right size mixers and the right everything, and she gets to show up and bake cakes that blow your mind. I've done my job because she gets the space to be who she is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. That's my soap. One of my favorite soap boxes because I love this thing. Yes, absolutely. Um, And we have uh, artist T-Pop on YouTube. She says, thank you both for beautiful vibes this evening of all evenings. Oh, thank you for (laughs) tuning in on this evening. Thank you. Yeah. And I love that she said that because it's just like, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot going on right now and there's some, I did my part. I'm quite sure you did your part. And, um, but you know, there's other things going on too. And to be able to give that little something different, something, you know, uh, that people could, uh, you know, rest assured on and, or positive or just something different. It's, it's nice to be able to do that. So thank you for joining on this special night. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me, Nikki. You know, yes. unity starts with us. Mm-hmm. We can mm-hmm. vote once every four years. Yeah. Or we can show up on a daily basis. And I know you do, and I know I do, and I think a lot of people who are listening do. And mm-hmm. and it's like, that's the choice we make. Mm-hmm. We show up on a daily basis and we make unity our priority. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna judge you for your opinions on who you date or, or what you wear or what you eat or any of that stuff, what religion you, you practice, you know? I just, are you a good person? Mm-hmm. And so I think that's what we can really, for me, showcase. Mm-hmm. Um, now more than ever. Absolutely. And I see Scott said Amory has is 65% of the votes. Wow. Yay, go, Amory. We're plugging for you. Yes. And Tara, who's also my cousin, <laughs> she said, Yes, I needed this this evening. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I have to admit, I can mi- admit this on public radio. Um, I, we have this advisory group for the for the com- um, food hub. And the last couple of times we had a call, we really didn't have that much sort of pressing information to go over. But I kept the calls going because I needed the group to inspire me every two weeks. Mm. Or else, you know, when I came across the hurdles that one inevitably comes across, I uh, I would not be able to push through. Mm-hmm. And so I can really relate to how important it is to have these evenings, you know, where we just get reconnected to our mission. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And and I, yeah, I'm grateful to um, be able to, uh, to do this and to have amazing people on like yourself. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And oh, Nikki, next year, a few months. It's not even that far away. March 1st is the opening. Yeah. We are going to have a party. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And then a nap, but a party for (laughs) us. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes. If, if anyone is wants to get in on some of the groundwork and volunteer and be a part of uh, the advisory board for the food hub, how do they go about doing that? And that would be to reach out to me or Scott Strawbridge, me at uh, Rachel, my name, R-A-C-H-E-L, at Integris, like my company name, Integris Health Solutions, with an S, dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, and just shoot me an email and let me know. We'd love to have your voice. Um you know, the advisory board has been doing some great work around setting health guidelines. So we, one of our, one of the important things about this food hub is that we're also educating folks about the nutrient dense nature of food and how that plays a role in our health and well-being and our overall product productivity in life. 
And so we're setting guidelines around health, around sustainability and soy sourcing locally. Uh, so there's great work to be done. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm just going to, I put it in the chat, but I'm also going to run that since you did share your email. If you want to get involved with the hub, um, donate to invest in the hub when um, that uh an investment opportunity becomes available. Um, there's the email, rachel at integristhealthsolutions.com. So definitely uh, send her an email, so. Yes. Yeah. So I wanted to know with all of these things that you have going on, do you have any uh, personal like self-care practices or like, you know, grounding practices or something that kind of you know, calms you and while you juggle the world? Yeah. The most important part of my day are self-care practices. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't be able to function if I didn't. <laughs> I, uh, I take baths almost daily mm. with Epsom salts and essential oils. And I make sure that I physically nourish myself. So like I say, I drink my green water for my electron potential. And I drink... Um, green smoothies. I have an alkaline, mainly alkaline way of eating. Um, I take a lot of time to be outside. Mm. I wake up early. I, I grow food. So I run out, literally, I run outside in the morning to see what my plants have done overnight because they grow overnight and they change and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I spend, you know, I spend time with my family and my loved ones. And I have a very simple life. Mm. And that for me is the um, recipe that I need. Yeah. I, you know, I keep active. I get, I move around, I move my body a lot. And that's what I need to, um, to, to perform at a high level. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, you know, um, you know, that's something I definitely want to like reconnect with. Cause I say always enjoy baths. But, you know, I don't do them enough. And it's definitely relaxing because I, you know, I can't just take, I can't just like wash the tub and get in there. I have to be extra. I got to get candles and incense and a different light bulb and some jazz music. <laughs> but it feels good. It is nourishing. So, you know, it's something that I should definitely uh, revisit. <laughs> There's, um, so the salt, the Epsom salts, it's actually our skin's our biggest organ. And most of us are deplete, depleted in electrolytes. So mm -hmm. we're actually, we're not, we're not running electricity efficiently through our bodies. So the Epsom salt baths actually refill uh, our, some of our missing minerals. And then they also reduce, to literally pull toxins from our bodies. So all that stuff we're drinking and breathing and eating and thinking, uh, yeah. And it's all warm and floaty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good thing. I knew some of the, them and I just recently got some Epsom, a big bag of Epsom salt. So. Oh, score. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. Yes. If you had access to a time machine, where would you go and why? To the past or to the future? Oh, I would go to the past. Mm. Um, to a simpler time. I really like, I, I don't, um, I, I appreciate simplicity in my life. I mm -hmm. think uh, we've lost a lot as a human race in our rush to make things easier and more convenient for ourselves. Mm. We've overcomplicated and complicated our lives and actually made our lifestyles poisonous to us. Mm. So, you know, some of us, we pay somebody to fix our house and do our lawn. So we have to work extra hard so we can afford to pay them and pay for our gym membership to get the exercise that we're not getting by <laughs> taking the elevator, paying somebody to do our lawn, sitting at a desk, earning money. Mm -hmm. And so like all this craziness. So I want to go back to a time when like my job was to grow the food and then take care of my, my loved ones and, you know, weave some cloth. <laughs> Sounds yeah. so much easier to me. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> There's definitely some allure there. <laughs> I'm gonna miss my my Snapchat though, but <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's definitely uh, some truth to that. I noticed Tara mentioned we're all gonna need a hot bath after tonight. Indeed, yes. we are, Tara. Indeed, yeah. We are. <laughs> Hopefully, absolutely. it's going all right out there. Yeah, absolutely. A uh, hot bath, uh, some candles, some uh, aromatherapy, some uh, essential oils, as you said. Um, so yeah, some water or some tea or yeah. other libations. And some intentional thought and prayer. You know, I use that time with the water and I literally allow my thoughts, my unhealthy thoughts to just drain away as that water drains away. And mm. um, we can give gratitude. I give gratitude all the time when I'm in the water and I just, I surround myself in these thoughts of gratitude. And we can, for me, it's a time to consciously invite spirit in mm -hmm. for the purpose of my healing and the healing of all those that I love. Mm -hmm. And I, and I find the more that I include these little moments mm -hmm. of, of feeling, you know, of, of blessing, then my day is just a real beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have T pop saying, amen. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Absolutely. Rachel, it was so, you know, amazing and great to have you on the circle tonight and sharing what you're up to. I can't wait to see um, how the hub's going to turn out when it opens. Um, yeah. Well, thank you, Nikki. I can't wait either. I think we're building a beautiful thing together, all of us. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate you and I appreciate what you've contributed already. And and I'm excited to see we're going to be neighbors and doing beautiful things there. So um, it'll be wonderful. Thank absolutely. you for having me tonight. Yes, absolutely. And so I, I'm just going to pop over the Instagram for Rachel. So if you want to connect with Rachel, um, we had her email up earlier. And then the Instagram is Integris, Integris Health Solutions. Um, definitely connect to her, follow her, see what she's up to, get involved. Um, you know, if you are listening at all today at any part of this message, um, one of the big takeaways is that there's so many entry points, you know, no matter what level that you're at, what you have, your talent, your skill, your resource and financial level, there is a space for you to be able to contribute and to be a part of something wonderful. So definitely get in touch with Rachel and, uh, get more involved. <laughs> and so um, this program, The Circle, is brought to you by Nikki Lopez Creative and What's Your Elephant? Uh, What's Your Elephant is a movement that uses the arts to create safe spaces to talk about everything unspoken. So if you want to find out more about my projects and what I do, and um, which is also included in some of the things going on at the Y, uh, definitely go to whatsyourelephant.org. You could also go to linktree slash Nikki Lopez and you could get some other links and see what I'm up to. If you want to support, buy a t-shirt, be my guest, but just, you know, find out, get involved. There's a lot of things that we're up to and that's definitely a way to, um, to be aware of what's going on. And I think we have a comment. Oh, Tara, Tara's giving hearts. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Tara, oh my gosh, she, not only is she a chef with just regular cake stuff and cupcakes, she also does vegan stuff. So, um, and I'm not vegan, but I do appreciate vegan things, you know, whenever I can. So it's nice to know that uh, something is delicious and also um, not causing further damage um, to our body or it's made, you know, better ingredients and things like that and it's good for us. So, mm -hmm. A pleasure to have. Yeah, Tara's wonderful. She brings so much to our conversations, just her knowledge and her way of being and her background. Um, you know, we want to bring not just food to the Cistrunk neighborhood, but we want to bring locally sourced, healthy, delicious food. Mm -hmm. And those things are, are not mutually uh, exclusive. They are mutually inclusive. Mm -hmm. And it's chefs like Tara and the chef culture folks that are proving that to us. So we're excited about what we're going to expose people to mm -hmm. and the resources we're going to make available for them to take home. We're going to have weekly farmer's market. 
So we're and uh, we'll, you know, we'll be working with programs like Fab Fresh Access Bucks, where uh, Snap Bucks, that Snap Dollars, will be worth two for one for Florida grown mm -hmm. produce. Um, so again, supporting local farmers, but also making food more accessible and equitable. Um, and just taking it from there, you're blowing this thing up, using food as our jumping off point. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you again, Rachel, for being here. Thanks to the few people that's online. We have people on Facebook. We have people on YouTube. And thank you in advance for those who's going to watch it on the replay as well as listen to it. So a couple months ago, I got involved with a pod. I finally upgraded the circle to a podcast. So it's recorded live on YouTube and Facebook. And then I download the video and upload the audio. So if you go to Spotify, if you go to iTunes, you go to Google Podcasts, um, uh, Amazon, um, you would look up the circle and you could listen to all of the episodes we've been going since January 2018. So there's lots of content to discover. Lots of amazing. Congratulations. Yes, thank you, thank you. Oh, Tara, Tara saying, I'm so excited. Absolutely, absolutely. Heck yeah. So, yeah, so uh, we went over a little bit, which is fine, you know. Um, oh, we have one last comment. Mm -hmm. Cal farmer's market sounds good. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, absolutely. So definitely get involved. So um, I, I'm gonna sign off for tonight. We are gonna be back here. Uh, next Tuesday at 8.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, unless there's just, there's so much wonderful news that we go on to an hour like we did tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. Thanks again, Rachel. And Thanks. everyone, have a good night. You too. Thanks so much. Bye.